Oh, wow. Okay. A lot of curveballs, a lot of disappointment, but a lot of overwhelming news. There's so much to talk about today that the first thing I just want to get out of the door, there was pretty much no hardware at this event. So yeah, no AirTags, no AirPod Studio, no ARM Mac unveilings, but good news for those ARM Macs we'll talk about in a second, but there was technically new hardware for the record. It is a developer kit that only developers can buy. So it's not made for consumers, but they have made a Mac mini that's sporting an A12Z chip running, of course, Mac OS completely on ARM. So without further ado, let's begin. So I'm not going to talk about the event in chronological order because I think macOS is the most interesting part. So it's called Big Sur. Yes, kind of like Big Chungus, but yeah, macOS Big Sur, because it's a surprise, was a giant fundamental redesign. I was totally not expecting this. This came completely out of left field. They essentially redesigned macOS to look way more like the iPad, bringing things like Control Center and the dock and the apps are in the more shapes of iPads. And it kind of goes along with the theme of unifying iPads and Macs together, making them more simple. And the design language is very simple similar, except for the fact that, you know, the apps on macOS Big Sur look very skeuomorphic and a little bit odd, but for the most part, this is going to divide people. I've already seen a ton of people hate the new redesign for macOS. I'm personally kind of a big fan of it. I like the way my iPad user interface is, and bringing that to the big screen on the Mac looks to be awesome. It's going to work on any Mac basically from 2013 or later, so seven years of software updates for some of you, and yes, of course, that includes the Trash Can Mac Pro. This comes to fundamental redesigns with Mail, Messages, Safari. Oh, by the the way, screen animations for iMessage. They finally come over the same screen animations we've had since iOS 10. Yeah, they finally brought that to the Mac. And the sad news, of course, is no, I did not get to see my redesigned iMac I was hoping so much for. And we also did not get to see the redesigned ARM MacBook I was talking so much about. But the good news is Tim Cook clarified on stage that the first ARM MacBook for consumers will be out before the end of this year. So it's not going to be that long a wait. And he also said that a new Mac with an Intel CPU is still in the pipeline and will be shipping later. So with that in mind, and Ming-Chi Kuo's report recently saying that the first ARM MacBook will be coming out by the end of this year and it'll be a MacBook Pro, he also said that a redesigned iMac would be coming and it would have Intel CPUs inside. So that means we're still getting this stuff before the end of the year, which is fine because buying it right now would be a little bit tight for me. So now I get some more time to save for it. And overall, I'm kind of bummed out about the transition to ARM without Apple actually showcasing the hardware. I found it particularly bizarre that Apple plans on unveiling hardware in less than six months that's going to be rocking ARM CPUs and they wanted to reference it today but they didn't want to show us what it looked like or what it was running or anything so I guess it just means that the next Apple event is going to be stuffed with hardware but yeah bizarrely no AirTags no AirPod Studio and no new Apple TV no new iMacs of any kind all things we were told would be ready to ship but if we learned anything from today's event it's that leakers oftentimes don't know what exactly they're reporting and Apple can still surprise us in the days when there's so many leaks going around. So spinning off of the redesign of macOS moving into iPadOS, we've got some new widgets. In fact, that's coming both to iOS 14 and yes, it is iOS 14. iPhone OS wasn't a thing. To be fair though, it's always been referred to as iPhone OS internally. So I feel like John Prosser, the guy who leaked that probably saw that internal build and thought, oh, they're rebranding it to iPhone OS when in reality, internally, it's always been called iPhone OS. So yep, that leak's not happening. So it's officially iOS 14. And the good news is both iOS 14 and and iPadOS 14 will run on every single iPad and iPhone and iPod, you're still there, that iOS 13 and iPadOS ran on before. So nobody's getting left out on these software features. That means even the first generation iPhone SE and people that have rocked the iPhone 6S. Also people who have the iPad mini 4 and iPad Air 2 are getting iPadOS 14 and that brings them to seven years of software support for an iPad. To me, that's amazing. Very happy to see the OS be supported for so long. iPadOS was definitely not as major as we were thinking it was going to be. So first off, no Final Cut, no Logic, no Xcode, which was definitely a bit of a bummer. We were heavily expecting that going into this event, and it appears that that's not going to be the case. But they have redesigned the call user interface and Siri to be less obtrusive. So Siri is just a little dot. She stays out of the way. Call animations are just a little drop down notification. Thank you, Apple. And they've also brought some updates to maps as well as messages. So messages now have more conversation pieces, and you can reply directly to people, and you can set the group chat 
messaging settings so that you only get notified when someone pings you. Essentially, you can type someone's name and that will directly call them out. And you can have dedicated conversations within group chats. So basically, iMessage is overall better. You can pin messages to the top of iMessage. And of course, the redesigned widgets on iOS 14 look amazing. There's gonna be so many different options to choose from. You have different widgets and galleries that you can add on the home screen and it all redesigns itself very elegantly, as well as an app library. So it's kind of similar to an app launcher, but it's completely automatically set up and organized automatically for you. So you can just swipe over and see all of your apps in dedicated areas, like recently added and most commonly used apps, which to me looks very, very helpful, especially for those of us who have tons and tons of apps on our phones. So home screen redesign is awesome, as well as picture in picture. I never thought I would see this day, but picture in picture is finally available on iOS 14. So hopefully some more video apps can support that, but given YouTube doesn't even support picture in picture on the iPad and it's had it for years, I doubt YouTube will bring it to iOS 14, but maybe if we're loud enough and we complain to YouTube enough, they will bring it. That would be amazing. And it's even resizable. So you can of course hear audio when it's swiped up and then you can make it bigger at the top portion of the screen. It follows you around. But yeah, a lot of people have been wanting this for a long time and I'm glad you finally have that option. iPad also got some Apple music redesign. So you can see lyrics and control the music as you're watching it. There's a lot more toolbars now. So the iPad is making better use of its larger screen real estate. Also some good news coming to both iPad OS and iOS 14 is that you'll be able to change video resolution in frame rates on any device. Now, it's no longer a pro phone feature where you have to buy the iPhone SE or some iPhone 11 if you wanna change the resolution and frame rate. Now, they're just building that into all devices. Thank you, Apple. That's what it should have been in the first place. Apple talked a little bit about car key, so you can, you know, using NFC and the ultra wideband chip, unlock your car with more and more cars adopting this technology, but not Teslas, because Teslas, you just kind of walk up to them and they automatically unlock. You don't have to bring your phone out and ping it to the door. Wrong channel. We won't talk about that today. But yeah, car key is a thing. Also, they launched a new Translate app. So you'll now be able to have live time communication through Apple's version of Google Translate, which looks very elegant and well designed. And Siri is supposed to be getting smarter too. Instead of just, here's what I found on the web, she'll have more direct answers now, which I guess we'll have to experiment more with to see how good it actually is. But very happy to see that Siri does not take up the entire display anymore. And the call user interface, that of course is miles better than what we've had for years. I'm glad they finally changed it. As well as Apple cracking down more on privacy. So giving you more data on what apps are doing and if they're collecting a data profile on you and giving you a little icon if your microphone or camera is being used. So Facebook, you're in trouble because Apple's cracking down more on privacy. It's going to get harder and harder for third-party apps to find people's data and do it under the radar because of all the changes coming with iOS 14. So home screen redesign as well as some Apple Pencil features which allow you to draw and text people using Scribble with the Apple Pencil. I guess if you like writing with a stylus, you can do that. I'm not going to do it myself, but I'm amazed to say that during this entire keynote, we did not get any augmented reality demos. Of course, on the website, they talk about AR and stuff, but at this keynote, they just kind of left out AR demos, which are always like the most fluff part of the event. And there was very little fluff in this event. It was really moving fast. And obviously it was totally pre-recorded. There's no way this thing was live because there was all these transitions. And I will say it looked very crystal clear though. Watching it, it was very smooth. Everything was edited very nicely and the image quality was very good. I'd be okay with more events being like this in the future, even if we're not in a pandemic. Just having everything edited and stitched together so elegantly, I appreciated that. Also, watch OS 7. You can now track your dance moves. I know, we've been wanting this for a long time, right? So of course, the ever leaked sleep tracking is now a thing. So you have kind of a nighttime routine where your watch will slowly turn on do not disturb mode and dim the displays of certain devices. And then when you go to sleep, it will track that data and see how you're doing, which you can view in the new fitness app. So it's no longer called the activity app, but it basically does the same stuff. Of course, we got new watch faces because you can't have a new watch OS upgrade without new watch faces. Third party complications can now be used on multiple different parts of the Apple watch face. And in a way, they're kind of bringing third party watch faces because now you'll be able to share via a link or via different websites your favorite watch faces. So I'll be able to eventually, you know, tweet out the watch face I'm using and you can just click it and add that to your Apple watch library. So it's not exactly third party, but since third party apps can make complications of their own and then showcase to you what the watch face will look like and you can just hit add to my Apple Watch. In a way, it's like two and a half 
party watch faces. So lots more customization, basically. And the bad news for watchOS 7, which we did fear, this leak actually was correct, is that it requires an Apple Watch Series 3 or better. So yeah, sorry to those of you on the Apple Watch Series 2, you're not gonna be getting watchOS 7. And once again, this reaffirms my belief that we might get a CPU boosted version of the Series 3 later in the year, an Apple Watch SE of sorts. But yeah, watchOS 7 definitely seems to have some nifty handy features, new watch faces, and being able to add what others have used in the past, but definitely not a giant redesign like a lot of us were expecting. And Apple's definitely cutting off the older Apple Watches support in this department. So everything else Apple talked about today is very much compatible with very old devices, but that Series 2 and Series 1, their CPUs and GPUs were just too dang slow. Oh yeah, tvOS has picture in picture now, which I've wanted for years, but now I'm not even using my Apple TV, so who cares? And you heard me right at the beginning of this video, there is a Mac mini with an A12Z chip that costs $500. We're not exactly sure what the IO is on the back because they're not showing us, but it has 512 gigs of storage, 16 gigs of RAM, which is very cheap Mac mini, mind you, considering the A12Z chip is pretty powerful. And they showcase that Mac OS Big Sur is going to make it very easy to port over apps using Rosetta 2 and Universal 2. So making your apps compatible with the ARM architecture should be fairly easy. And also they are emulating old x86 apps. So even if third-party developers don't update their apps for the ARM Mac, it will still do its best to rewrite the program. And that's great because it essentially means all the apps we currently have on our Macs will still run on the ARM Mac. So not the Mac OS ARM I was worried about. Also, we saw a glimmer of the Dark Sky app, which Apple recently purchased being implemented into iOS 14 and iPad OS because now they're saying that they have very accurate like precipitation warnings and the weather app should be a lot more accurate and go more in depth and give you charts of what's going on with the weather. So there's where Dark Sky went. And they even brought some updates to AirPods Pro. So now using a software update, they're just able to give it surround sound with, you know, like 5.1 audio and it'll even be able to track how your head is moving and how your device is moving so that it'll really feel like the movies you're watching have audio coming from all around you, which is pretty trippy and unexpected. And they also rolled out a new feature for AirPods that does not apply to the very first generation, but will apply to the second generation in AirPods Pro. That means that you will automatically switch between which device you are using. So you don't have to go to Bluetooth settings and select AirPods each time. If you're using your iPad with your AirPods and then you just switch over to using your Mac, it will automatically connect to your Mac, which will save me a ton of time. I've always thought AirPods should work like this from the beginning, but now they do. Not exactly sure when that's rolling out. Could be in the fall, but that's kind of the major stuff. I mean, there's a bunch of other changes I could go into, but that's, I think, what I'm going to cover today. I'm very excited to see the ARM MacBook coming later in the year, as well as this redesigned iMac, which Tim Cook didn't essentially confirm, but he did say an Intel-based Mac is coming later this year, and Ming-Chi Kuo said the redesigned iMac is happening, so I'm still convinced that's a real thing. I just have to wait a little bit longer for it, but since iOS 14 looks so cool and Mac OS Big Sur, which still doesn't quite roll off the tongue quite well, seems to be a way bigger redesign than I was expecting, and I expect a lot of you guys to not like it, but that's okay because I think I'm gonna like it at the end of the day. I'm okay. You know what? I'll be all right. I can be patient. I can wait a little bit longer for this iMac and be in a better financial position so that I can go bonkers on this thing, and I can't wait to see what Apple has in store in the future. I'm glad the ARM transition is official now. I'm glad that everybody who got the last iPad OS will also get this one. Same with iOS 14. It was a pretty packed day for Apple, despite not having a lot of the stuff we were wanting. So disappointed, yes, in lots of ways. There was a bunch of stuff I was expecting that we didn't get, but at the same time, we also got a bunch of stuff I wasn't expecting. So it's hard to be mad. And I'm very curious to hear what you guys thought of Quadruple UDC by hitting me up over on Twitter. Join my Discord, we can chat more about it there. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I am very sweaty. I'll see you in the next one.